Chapter 266 Prohibition of Reviling a Muslim Without Any Cause Allah the Exalted says, And those who annoy believing men and women undeservedly bear on themselves the crime of slander and plain sin. 3358 1559 Ibn Masood anhu reported, The Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, said, Reviling a Muslim is fasuk, disobedience of Allah and killing him is tantamount to disbelief. Al-Bukhari and Muslim Commentary Killing him is tantamount to disbelief means that in terms of sin and prohibition, it is akin to kufr. This hadith makes the severity of this crime abundantly clear. 1560 Abu Dhar anhu reported, I heard the Messenger of Allah peace be upon him saying, when any Muslim accuses another Muslim of sin or of disbelief, the reproach rebounds upon the one who utters it if the other person is not deserving of it. Al-Bukhari Commentary What this hadith stresses is that one should never say about a Muslim that he is sinful, fasik, or disbeliever, kafir, when he is not so. The reason is that in that case, one who says it will be held fasik or kafir, one should therefore strictly refrain from uttering such statements. 1561 Abu Hurairah anhu said, The Messenger of Allah peace be upon him said, When two persons indulge in abusing each other, the beginner will be the sinner so long as the oppressed does not transgress the limits. Muslim Commentary this hadith tells us that if a Muslim abuses another and says unfair things about him, and in return the recipient also abuses him and says unfair things to the same extent, then the entire burden of sin of abusing would lie with the person who initiated the quarrel. But if the one who is wronged exceeds the limits in revenge, then he will also be guilty to the degree of his excess. Thus, this hadith shows that although revenge is permissible in Islam, it is better to forgive and bear the excess with patience. The reason behind this is that in revenge, one usually exceeds the limits and becomes an aggressor. Allah says, And verily, whosoever shows patience and forgives, that would truly be from the things recommended by Allah. 42-43 Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu said, A drunkard was brought to the Prophet, peace be upon him. He said, Give him a beating. Then some beat him with their hands, some with their shoes, and some with a folded piece of cloth. When he left, someone said to him, May Allah disgrace you. The Prophet, peace be upon him, said, Do not help Satan overcome him by uttering such words. Al-Bukhari Commentary we learn from this hadith that imprecation against a sinner helps Satan because he is avowed to disgrace and humiliate Muslims before Allah. When a Muslim curses another Muslim and imprecates for his humiliation and disgrace, he in fact tries to accomplish the mission of Satan because in doing so, Satan will have achieved his objective. Therefore, one should not curse a fellow Muslim even if he or she is a sinner. In fact, one should pray to Allah for his or her guidance. 1563 Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu said, I heard the Messenger of Allah peace be upon him saying, He who accuses his slave of zina will receive the punishment of had of slander on the day of resurrection unless the accusation of zina was true. Al-Bukhari and Muslim Commentary on the Day of Judgment, the masters of slaves and slave girls will be exposed to had al-Qanthi, had for accusing someone of adultery, for the reason that they perpetrate all kinds of oppressions on their captives, and their grievances are not redressed. On the Day of Judgment, when Almighty Allah dispenses justice without any prejudice and favor, He will also do full justice to this oppressed class and those masters who somehow escape the punishment on this account in this world. Thus, this hadith has a stern warning for those masters who are carried away by their might and authority and perpetrate oppression on their servants and slaves.